Mm, yes, yes, Lukowski, the Arctic equation. Mm -hmm. Now this is what I don't understand. This is... Oh, I see it's a natural logarithm function that makes sense. That explains it all, yes. Okay, all this math checks out. Yeah, this is what I noticed. I wonder what the impulse-based derivation was, and uh, if you apply that, that... Oh! Oh, I see. I see teeth thrust. Yeah. Oh, I'm a society. I didn't, I didn't notice you there. I was just doing a little bit of light reading, you see. Uh, let me put that away and we'll help you, because uh, you want to learn how to use an order, do you not? Well, it's very simple. And you and me, we're going to have a little bit of a good time learning about Nord together, huh? Okay, so, Nord is very simple. If uh, you have it installed on your computer, then you should have it uh, on your desktop somewhere. I like to keep all of my buttons here on the side on my taskbar. And so here I have it open already. You see, if you have not downloaded the program, you just go to nordvpn.com and you download it from there and put it on your computer. That is step one. Once you have that here, you open it up and you'll see a lot of different functions here. It's a cute little small window dancing around, but you know, I don't. I like to be have it big sometimes and and see it more easily. So I'll double click here. There we go. There we go. Okay. So here is where you'll be seeing most of the screen when you come into Nord. Uh, it's going to show you a lot of little dots that you can choose for where you want to be for your IP. Here we have a big list of countries you can choose from. Usually the closest it is to your place that you're in, like the United States, here in Texas. Oh, don't tell anyone now. We're on Nord. Uh-oh. Are we in Texas? You don't know. They don't know. That's the point. Anyhow, you want to keep close to where you are for the fastest speeds, but sometimes uh, the internet speeds are just not even noticeably different, even if you go over here to Europe. So you can try in Europe if you want to. It's not going to be that bad, but if you want the quickest speeds, you're going to stick to other places in the United States, and maybe Canada, and maybe Mexico. Now, another thing you should remember is if you're in a different IP and they speak a different language, then a lot of your web pages are going to be in a different language, silly. So if you don't know how to speak Spanish, then maybe you don't go to Mexico too much. Huh? But if you know how to speak English, well, maybe we stick with the United States, a little bit of Canada, you know, United Kingdom, places like that. Maybe Ireland is okay too. Uh, because they speak English over there, so it's a simple for our web pages, you know. There are some tricks you can use too. For instance, if you are in the United Kingdom IP, you should be able to go to the BBC. Let's try it right now. Huh? BBC.vom, that's wrong. That's silly of me. Come on. There we go. And we can go to maybe more. I don't know. Maybe we can go to uh, search. Maybe we want to watch a little bit of Kitchen Nightmares. I don't know. I like a Gordon Ramsay. He's a cool go. He's a cool dude. You know, Kitchen Nightmares. Let's search a little bit. There we go. Easy. Oh, that's Flat the Vampire. That's a different thing. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's coming to an end. Oh no. Anyway, I know there's a way that you can watch from BBC if you want to. Yes, I agree. It's a fine because it thinks that you're here in the UK with the IP. They might have fixed that recently, though, because it's 2020 and things are developing rapidly, you know. Used to be able to do that. I think that's true in Canada, too, because the Canada does the BBC. Or sometimes Netflix has different things based on where you are. For instance, a Canada Netflix might have a different things than the United States Netflix. So if you're on a VPN in that country, your Netflix is going to think that you're in that country too. And so you can watch a different thing on the Netflix if you're in Canada versus if you're in the United States, that sort of thing. So there are some benefits that come with it as well. You can explore them. There's probably some Reddit posts you can find that compiles all of them too. What you need to know about this site here is not very much because usually Nord is going to quick connect you on its own and it's going to find a good one for you. There are some different things you can do. If you want to go to a specific country, you just find the country on the list and you click it. It's automatically set to go to the fastest one you see. Right here, your regional Canada, fastest server, fastest. I can change if I want to. I can go to Vancouver or Montreal or if I'm feeling uh, very cold, I can go to Toronto maybe put on a jacket before you do that. I'm just kidding. You're in your you're in your house at your computer. 
You can also look at all the different servers in Canada and this percentage stands for the capacity that they're at right now. So the higher the percentage, usually the worse because the more people are on it. You don't want to be on with all those people, you know, that's crazy. There's too many people, but all these are really low. So usually it's going to be a descending list that, uh, oh, I guess a ascending list, you know, because here we are in the fastest one, 11% capacity. You won't have to wait for all these other people to load the things. But anyway, you can just click on the Canada and it has defaulted the fastest and it'll just put you in Canada right now. I'm on the UK, UK over here because I wanted to try the BBC thing, but you can be wherever you want to. I go to Canada most often. You can see here my recents is the ones I use quite a lot. The P2P is, uh, stands for peer-to-peer. -peer. You don't really need to use this one too much. It's like other Nord users, connecting with other Nord users. It's uh, good for some sorts of things, but not for all these sorts of things, you know? You can also do something called an onion over or a quick connect. A quick connect is just going to take you to the fastest one that's available to you at the time. Usually a quick connect is gonna put you in the United States because that's the closest to you, you know? Anyhow, these are my reasons and these are the specialty services. It's just a peer-to-peer. -peer. Again, it's always going to default to fastest and fastest. And this is my country list. I like it to see all the countries and their flags. They're so pretty. Anyhow, why don't we go over here into the settings menu, yes? Here in the settings menu, you can do a lot of things. Auto connect on the Wi-Fi. Off for me, but that's just because my computer doesn't have any Wi-Fi. So why do I need those settings, you know? always when the app launches I do this ah, yes I do this always but it doesn't matter to me because my PC doesn't have Wi-Fi I can choose a VPN protocol and server automatically that just makes things a quicker if you don't understand the VP super in-depth so this is a good one to have you can also add your trusted Wi-Fi networks if you don't want a VPN when you're at home but what's the point if you're not gonna have it at home the CIA can look at you wherever and whenever so I say always always have this list be empty of course for me it doesn't matter because i have no wi-fi connected in my pc so i could not get to wi-fi even if it needed to a kill switch is an interesting thing so basically a kill switch makes sure that every time you're not connected to a vpn that you are not connected to the internet so in other words if something goes wrong and you're not on the vpn anymore you want to just shut the internet connection off to make sure that you're completely safe. Really, you don't have to do this unless you're doing secret spy, secret agent kind of thing. And uh, if you're just trying to do it to, you know, be a little bit safer or try to get a job or something like that, you don't need to worry about no kill switch, okay? It's fine. Let's go to advanced, huh? Advanced is a little bit advanced. I uh, don't use it very much, but basically this uh, if you're on a LAN connection which I am because I don't have a Wi-Fi then basically it can take me off of the local network so it even protects me when I'm on my local network which is a very important if you don't want government to see you NSA CIA they can see all devices on a similar network so this can protect you from that I usually am not going to send my metadata to people because I don't trust them, but with Nord, I trust Nord, so I'm okay with sending them my anonymous uh, data that helps them improve their system. That's fine with me. Here I am in my account. This is my name, as you know. This is who I am, Margaret Brooks. I'm from Spain, España, and uh, I can change my password if I want to, but I don't want to. Here's when my subscription ends, you know, and then this is a very easy thing to do. This is how you're going to set up on your phone, you see. It's very simple. They make it so easy. Why can't everything be so easy? I say when I do this because it's so easy, you know This is just uh, sort of telling you all the things that you can get it on You don't really need to worry about clicking these things because you're not on a phone right now You're on your computer. Why would you click it? You know, but if you do use Chrome or Firefox I use Chrome personally. Sometimes I use Firefox. In fact, let's open it up, huh? I do recommend adding the VPN extension to Chrome and Firefox because Chrome can be a little tricky little boy sometimes and they run a lot of background things and sometimes one of the things might not be on a VPN even if you're set to be on a VPN and so I think it's very important to just hit the add to Chrome button it will add it as an extension to Chrome and now you know whenever you open Chrome it will be on the VPN which is important important thing here we are on a Firefox I have it open now so I'm going to add it to Firefox as well to show you how it's done ba boom 
NordVPN is a proxy extension for it. Yes, I will use it. Well, am I still in Chrome? You silly. There we go. In fact, why don't we just NordVPN extension. I'm a basta. <laughs> this is a different language, you see. Oh, I see why it's happening, you see. It's because my Firefox is uh, connected to my Chrome, actually. You see, I have it uh, syncing, so I don't actually have to add it to Firefox because it is syncing from the Chrome extension. Wonderful. Anyhow, that's just to add it to your browsers on your PC, but what you need to know, girl, is how to do it on your phone, and it is so simple. All you have to do is put your email address in here, you see? You hit the send link, right, you know? And then when you're on your phone, you open that email from your phone, and it's going to be like, hey, you want to have Nord on your phone then? And you say, yes, of course I do. And so it will take you to a link to download the app on your phone, uh, which you will do, and then the app will open, and it will say, here you are on the phone with the VPN and it will automatically uh, establish itself as your VPN proxy on your network so that you don't have to worry about any of that tech stuff because I don't understand any of the tech stuff on the phone if you want to you can go into settings and turn off the automatic VPN but Nord will turn it on automatically for you which is a good thing it's what you want and then if you don't want to be on a VPN you just go into settings and you say no I'm gonna go off VPN now and you flip that switch and it's something that has always appeared. You probably just didn't see it before because you never use a VPN. But it's been there for a long time on the phone. So it's very simple. You can also discover their other products, I suppose, if you want to. If you're feeling like it, I think. You might have all of these things if you did with the deals. The Nord Locker is a good thing, I think. It's uh, like a OneDrive, but it's a not so bad. It's like Google Drive, but it's a not so bad. And that's a basically a program that it sits on your computer the thing about Nord Locker though is you cannot have it on your phone so whereas you can access OneDrive and Google Drive from your phone because they have apps you cannot do the same thing with Nord Locker so Nord Locker is something that is just for your PC they will store some of the files for you on their Nord Cloud and you can access them by downloading the program on any PC that you are on and then logging in and then accessing the files this way but you cannot do it on a device that is mobile, at least not right now. Perhaps they're going to be making it sometime soon? I don't know. I hope so, though. It could be a fun thing to do. And this is it. Here in the general area, I'm not sure if we went over this, but I do like to launch mine at a startup. It's going to pop up and be like, hello, I'm here for you. The computer's on. Would you like to be on a VPN? And I like that. If you don't like it to pop up and say hello, you can make sure that when the app launches, it's a minimize, so it's not right there in the middle of your screen, you know, blocking all your things. You can have the notifications on because if someone tries to tamper with you and turn off your VPN yes you want to know that so I keep that on <clears throat> and this is a very good thing it will block ads and malicious websites already so it's already kind of an antivirus too you know you can choose your language too and that's a north it's a very simple it's very wonderful here I am in the United Kingdom but really, I'm not. I'm over here somewhere, you know, but I, it looks like I'm over here and I'm hidden on my local network so people can't mess with me when I'm doing things that are uh, maybe a little bit sneaky when I'm online, you know. It's a crazy thing. Anyway, I suppose I'll get back to my light reading. I have to catch up on a little bit of my uh, Solkovsky rocket equation, you know. It's a simple stuff. Uh, it's a chart, you know, everyone's seen this astrodynamics chart people know what it means <laughs> just brushing up you know <laughs> nothing special I hope you have a wonderful time with NordVPN it's a very good and if you don't like it you just get your money back or maybe you build a company for it for having to use it because uh, you're doing spooky things I don't know maybe they have a reason to pay for it for you you know thanks so much for listening and you have a wonderful day okay adios <laughs>